Good morning. I'm really happy to be here. I want to thank Chris and the guys for having me over. Uh, really exciting when uh, a conference pays for your flight ticket. Uh, uh, it's actually a bad uh, deal because in the last two months I was spending so many evenings working on this presentation, and all the stress that came with it. So I don't know if I can recommend it. We'll talk after the presentation, we'll see. Uh, so it started with a talk about the Python enhancement proposals, and it turned into the great fork. Uh, this is the last version, that's it, I won't update the presentation again. Uh, we're done. Um, I'm very happy that uh, I gave my first uh, PyCon keynote here in uh, the Czech Republic. Uh, last time I was here, it was uh, 24 years ago, uh, still Czechoslovakia and I was uh, hitchhiking uh, around the country. Um, I got as far out as Košice. Uh, anybody here from Košice? Do they look familiar, maybe, those guys? I mean, we lost touch. Uh, uh, it was like uh, from 24 years ago. It was uh, just an afternoon, Sunday afternoon, drinking with them at the uh, local beer hall. And uh, uh, Chesky Badiovic, anybody? I mean, these guys have to be famous in Chesky Badiovic, you know? I mean, I mean, I don't know. Uh, it was, it, I really had a great fun traveling around uh, Czechoslovakia, and uh, I came here for two main reasons then. Uh, the beer, and also because I really love uh, Czech literature. Um, my favorite book at the time was uh, I think it's called The White Book by Pavel Kuhot. I don't know if you uh, rings a bell with anybody, and Milan Kundera, and uh, uh, Schweik, of course. Uh, this is really enjoyed the humor of it and the kind of special Czech way of looking at life, like uh, bitter funny. Uh, that's the way I look at it. Um, I actually didn't go into Brno last time I was here. Uh, this is the only photo I have. I decided to pass it by and I was stranded waiting for a ride here for two hours. So uh, I, I, I was so bored that I took out my camera and took a picture of the ugly buildings. I don't know, do, do you guys have any idea where it is? It, 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 it should be in Brno, I'm pretty sure of it. Uh, uh, I mean, after so many years, you don't remember that. And, and after I left Brno and somebody did uh, pick me up, um, actually, it was a great ride. It was a BMW M5 going to the uh, racetrack to test the car. So I spent the day at the racetrack uh, looking at M5s uh, being tested. Uh, I kind of I went on with my trip uh, going east. Uh, well, first up to Berlin and then Poland and then uh, Ukraine and uh, Russia and then down to Kazakhstan. Uh, into uh, Tibet, China, and then Tibet, and Nepal, and then India, and back home. Took me five months to complete the trip. Uh, it was great fun and seeing a part of the world that most of it isn't there anymore. I, I remember uh, in Moscow seeing a queue, and I would just stand in queue. for. I, I didn't know what it was about, and, and then you go into the store, and you see this, like, it, it was a French um, dairy product like yogurt and really nice one from the West, and you go into the shop and you see only one or two products on the shelf and you buy a, a nice yogurt like I, have, like I have back home in the West. I pay and I go out and there's a huge queue of people just waiting to buy those fancy yogurts and butter and, and uh, cream. So as, as I got back, I had a job offer, my first job offer, uh, and uh, I, I took it and my first development machine was a Quadra 950 uh, running the Mac OS 7.5. Uh, at the time there was a, a, local, uh, a local network, a serial network of uh, the Macintosh world and I joined the startup that tried to accelerate uh, the local network in the Mac world. Uh, at the end, uh, the solution the, uh, was to hack the read-write loop inside the system to enlarge the buffer from 4K to 100K, and then it will double, we double the speed of transferring of large files in the local uh, Macintosh network. Wouldn't, there's 
it sounds so silly today, but yeah, that, that was the, the, the startup idea. And then it did a pivot and it started working on accelerating TCPIP. It was the date when the connections were really slow and a 56K modem, uh, the TCP slow start was making things worse and we tried to uh, change it and uh, looking a lot by, by work, including uh, implementing complicated algorithms and <laughs> debugging them using a sniffer, a network sniffer, uh, which came as, uh, made me learn uh, more about the network and how it's, uh, how it's structured. Uh, and then when this company went under, uh, stayed there for four, five years, uh, I started my own company, uh, which was really about developing a testing tool uh, we needed in this previous startup, which is a network emulator. We needed to test how things will work when there's latency, when there's bandwidth limitation, when there's packet loss, when there's jitter. It was just the time when people were starting to make voice calls over the internet. The internet was uh, just starting to take off. and. Um, this company, I mean, our first product was launched in 98. Uh, it was the, called the cloud. Um, I, I wrote an NDIS intermediate driver uh, in C, which basically goes into the Windows NT 3.5 and delays uh, the packets, uh, loses some of them. And it became quite successful. And uh, I eventually, after six, seven years of growing the company to 60 people, decided I had enough. And I had this whole management thing and it was a mistake, so I just, I left it. I was lucky enough to sell most of my shares to uh, investors I brought in. And then I went back to coding. Um, and uh, was Python was kind of a revelation for me. I mean, I started the first professional job I had in the army was maintaining a Fort One program and then I went into C and Ada and back to Assembler and so many languages and Python is really, I really love it and I really enjoy programming so much. So kind of, uh, I took off the entrepreneur hat in the last 18, eight years and I'm back in the trenches coding. In the last year I spent, uh, I, I'm on contract with the Museum of the Jewish People. Uh, we have a huge database of family trees, 11,000 family trees with nearly 5 million people. People create their family trees using desktop, desktop, desktop software or online services and they send it to the museum for safekeeping. So uh, now what I did in the last year was figuring out to how to put it online because up till today we have a client server uh, kind of an architecture where you have to come in and uh, to look uh, for trees and look for people you know and look for your family members. And now it's online. And actually one of a nice product we did was the spotlight on, uh, on the Czech, on the communities. Uh, we had a donor whose family came from, uh, from Prague, I think. Uh, and there's actually an interesting film we found from Brno, 1935, we found in our data sets. Um, so anyway, uh, this was a little bit about myself. Or not not a little bit, but <laughs> a lot myself. Uh, this is um, this is the best. Uh, there's a Chinese uh, "May you live in interesting times," uh, and I think that it's it's also a blessing. I mean, we live in very interesting times, and mainly because we have all this blue uh, ocean here. Uh, this is a, a, a chart from the. Center for Applied Internet Data Analysis, Keda.org. You can go in and, and read about the mythology and what they do. They started tracking the internet in January 2000, when that, that was the size of the internet. You here have close to the nodes, and you go back and you see the, uh, the big switches. The and, and this is what we have today. Um, it's, it's grown like... It's, am it's amazing, I it really is uh, for somebody who's been there uh, connecting computer with two Unixes with RS-232 cable uh, and, and passing a file using UUCP uh, to see what happened in the, in, in the world of the uh, internet and, and to kind of 
live in a world where it's much easier to put everything online instead of just transferring between two machines sitting next to each other. I mean, think about it. When you want to send a file to somebody who sits next to you, you'll put it online and you send them a link or you tweet it, or, or you put it in a drive. Uh, th the internet really uh, took off, and uh, it's quite amazing because uh, it's all based on this one document, uh, a lot of research before that, but that's the, the request for change 791, which is the internet protocol. Uh, the, the Internet Engineering Task Force publishes uh, documents, drafts, requests for change that engineers b bring in. Uh, and this is a draft from 1991. It was the fourth version of the Internet Protocol, another testing version. Nobody thought it's going to be that successful. A and the idea of the Internet is pretty simple. I mean, there were local networks at the time. There were networks in the university and the research centers. Uh, the, the idea is how you create those uh, local networks and, and make them into a, an, an internet work basically and allow higher level protocol like TCP and UDP uh, give you what was then the highest level protocol, Telnet and FTP. Right? That's before the HTTP uh, days uh, where Telnet, people were Telneting into computers and using FTP to transfer file. And it, it, it became so successful that we ran out of addresses, right? I mean, now we have IPv6, which expands the address from 32-bit to 128-bit, because, again, it, we have too many devices there. And with the Internet of Things, we're going to have more, 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 and more devices. And I think that the RFC 791 is, is important also because, kind of, really, it's the Magna Carta of our generation, I think. A and it's also because of the way it was, it was done. A few engineers came together, drafted a document, published it, and said, this is our proposal. This is the way it should happen. This is the way we think it. And then uh, software developers and companies like Cisco took the protocol and started developing products based on it. It's not the old way of doing a standard, where you have a standard body, uh, which releases and say, this is the way you have to work. This is still a request for change. I mean, it wasn't forced, the Internet Protocol wasn't forced by anybody. It was just great engineering that other engineering were happy to adopt and to, cr to, to build devices that support the Internet Protocol. So it's really a bottom-up approach and a, a way of thinking that th it's always moving. Um, and the, the Internet... Uh, really brings with him, uh, uh, it changes humanity, I think, because of this blue ocean we have of network and the fact that uh, everybody uh, has in his pocket uh, a very strong personal computer, endless storage, and you can communicate with anybody in the world just like that. I mean, it really gives us more bandwidth as humanity. And just like the, the printing press of uh, Gutenberg and the telegraph of the 19th century, it really gives us, as people, as a society, working together, a space to grow. And that's basically uh, where the Arab Spring comes from, the way I understand it. Now, it's true, it's, it's interesting time. So th th there's a curse there as well, because uh, it, it's not so easy. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is by my daughter, my 12-year-old daughter, Noya. Um, the idea is that this is the guy who invented fire, right? And, I mean, people got their... I mean, fire was very important, but people really got their hands burnt uh, all the time. And even in 1666, London was burnt. I mean, it was thousands of years till we really uh, got the idea of how to put the fire in, a, f in, a, in a, um, a power station and just get electricity to home and we can use the power of fire in a different way. So we, we're like this first generation and we get our hands burned and what happened in the Arab Spring and what happened in uh, Syria right now, I think is kind of us trying to deal with this raw power and, and trying to... The, it's, it's raw, it's uncontrollable, it really is. There's still not a good way of 
using uh, the internet for, for social change, for, for government. So I think we have to uh, start thinking differently about things. Um, and we have, to we have to fork and we have to cherry pick. Uh, we have to go uh, and rethink what, what dictators is about. Um, and uh, it's we used to think of dictators like that, but we know that there are other kind of dictators today. And really, when you look at the success of Linux, and I, I, I remember the time when IBM had its own version of Unix, AIX, and HP had its own version of Unix, HP UX, and Sun had Solaris, and Silicon Graphic had its own version of Unix, and they were competing who will be the winning Unix. And this guy, and according to him, only everybody in the world is stupid. I mean, there, there are only six smart people he pulls code from, right? And, and <laughs> his system kind of, of building this uh, anthill of developers, of kernel developers, really uh, made, we all have a kernel in our pockets today. And it really, the system works, dictatorship works. And, and it's not like dictators of the old, uh, of, the, of the 20th century, because it, it's knowledge-based. They have no power. Linus as a dictator has no power uh, over uh, the body of anybody in the community. But he has the, the authority to decide things and to stop all bike-shedding arguments and to kind of give a clear vision and a clear... He puts his name on a project, and then that, that makes the project different. Uh, in the project we started in Israel, Open Knesset, I, uh, th the guy who started it, Ofri, he's the benevolent dictator. I, uh, just the number two there, and I, and I practice this way of thinking or, or way of participating in, an, in, in a community where you just like all the other commoners, and when Ofri says something, you just help explain to everybody else, hey, that's the way it goes, forget it. I mean, you, don't ha you can't argue anymore. It takes time to uh, convince people to this way of thinking that when the, BDF the BDFL is spoken, that's it. The argument has ended. Uh, and, and I think it works great because you can also fork. It's all open knowledge. So dictator, uh, if you don't like, if a big part of the community doesn't like the dictator, it can just basically copy everything and bring a new king. Um, so, dictators are good. Dictators are good for you. And this is just uh, you know the guy on the left. Uh, this is, you know who this is? Anybody knows who this is? So, so he's, he's, he's a dictator from the acad academy, academic world, from, from the, the education world. I mean, we don't call him a dictator because the word such has such a bad uh, connotation. But the minute he puts his name on the Khan Academy, uh, it, it became his, and his name is there, and he's the guy who basically uh, says what's the spirit and how things should go. And, and that's, that's why the Khan Academy has been so successful. It's not run by a committee. Um, remember that elephants are only small mice that were planned by a committee and executed by a community. So uh, it's, it's really, you, you have to keep things small and smart. You have to have dictators. Um, Another thing uh, I want to fork is parliament. parliament. Um, again, I'm, I've been working in Open Knesset, which is uh, the Israeli parliament, where we scrape the official Knesset site um, and, and we display the information in a much more meaningful way. For example, in the official site, there's a, a place where they show all the bills that the members of parliament put before the parliament. They have another section where they show the votes that were in the parliament, and another place where they have the committee discussion. So if you want to track a bill and see the votes that were on that bill and the discussions, you can't do it. It's different places. There's not a single ID that tags this uh, bill, and you have to do a lot of search. So there's a lot of information there. And, and we, we scraped the, the, the site, and we brought it all in, uh, in line and, uh, and, and created a beautiful Django interface. We started with 096. We're actually still stuck at 1610, I think. We have to kind of, we really have to upgrade. It's, it's a huge project and we have uh, scraping. 
Uh, we have a lot of work with scraping that really burns us down. Um, and yeah. and really what Parliament is, is not about a lot of people in the room talking, it's about coding together. It's, it's, well, it's more than coding, there are three things that happen in a Parliament. One is uh, monitoring of the government, uh, where you can bring anybody from the government and ask them a question. Uh, the other thing is uh, talking and debating, which is not really happening there anymore, right? It happened on Twitter, as you see, we see from the election in the US. And the last thing is to code the laws, to have a process. Uh, this, is, this is was made automatically by a piece of software called GORS. Uh, which takes the Git uh, history and creates it into a film. Uh, you have here the date, uh, and you have the people that are making the commits, and it's, it's like two and a half minutes of uh, uh, development the last year or so, and you see people changing files, uh, moving around, and you can let it run with any Git repositories. There are two and a half hours of uh, the Linux, Linux development, so I uh, want one evening to sit and think about it and look at it if I have the time. Uh, but but th there's not a big difference between coding software and coding a law. I mean, th the language is legal uh, rather than Python or whatever programming language, but, but still every, every character counts and you have to make it clear so a judge can run the code or a government office can take the code you and operate based on it. So we have a more intelligent execution uh, units, but it's still code. Um, and, and another important thing is to create local groups. So we can work online and, and do things. Do things. We need local uh, user groups to sit together. Here we are uh, with, again, three users which are activists. The, the Open Knesset project is really aimed at activists. Um, we, I always say that we need to reach only 2% of the population in Israel to be effective. Because the, most of the people just want to sit and watch reality and shows and TV, and, and that's fine. I mean, there's the 2% that decide that they want to do something for their country, they want to change, they want to have better education for the kids or cleaner streets. And, and give those, group those people together and, and uh, give them free beer, that's also important. We had free beers in our meetups. Uh, uh, we meet every Monday at 6 p.m. with free beers for six years now. Started at my roof and I used to buy the beers. Now we have a non-profit and uh, uh, the Rothschilds are paying for our beers, so, so that's good. Uh, yeah. And we, we, we did our own beer. We had the run of our own beer, uh, cooked our own beer. Omer was leading that. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if here it's that bad. Probably not, because uh, you guys are more relaxed, right? I mean, it's, it's less shouting, it's not. But it's it just, the election is you choose the one who made you hate more. I mean, they basically try to poke holes in each other. And it's, it just doesn't work. There, there's really no discussion about the way how things should be do, uh, going. It's all just hate. Um, and, and I think we should start with the proverb. Um, uh, th this is kind of the base of Python, b before we had the peps. Uh, the system was just, uh, w when people first met Python and tried to understand what what's it's about, it's about consenting adults working together. We make a choice working together, and we are all adults in this, and we are all in here because we want to work together. It's not somebody from the top and some kind of uh, consultants that tell him what he should do and how he should talk and how what's going to be the public image and run polls and try and see what works. It's a group of consulting adults working together. Now, it worked fine at the beginning for Python, uh, but then we had to change it. Um, 
And I think now if I try to distill and kind of what the system of Python is and, and try and generalize the way the Python community works. And, and Guido says uh, that Python is really a language developed by a community. Uh, although he is the BDFL, uh, I guess it opens the, the room for a community to work together. So uh, the PEPs are basically a system that allows us to maintain a book of drafts. Uh, in the Python uh, world, uh, uh, PEP1 is the uh, document which defines the Python enhancement proposal. If you, as a, a de developer coding in Python, want to enhance Python, want to uh, have, have new ideas about uh, where Python should go, you can go and read PEP1. And there's a clear process of how you write your proposal. And what's the, where's the Python ideas? You go to a mailing list, Python ideas, and you present your ideas, and then you get feedback, and maybe you, you get somebody to sponsor you. And PEP1 says that it, it, it really, the PEPs are divided into three layers, three types of PEPs. The bottom one are the standards one. Uh, this is like, how do you do uh, relative imports? Or WSGI, uh, for example. Uh, th this is a Pepsi read to understand how the language is working. Uh, another layer is the process one. Uh, somebody sent me PEP 404. Uh, who did it? I don't know. Pep, pep you did. <laughs> Hi, Benny. Uh, so, so it's uh, PEP 404 is the the unscheduled of the unreleased of 2.0 Python 2.8, right? It's it's the unscheduled of. There's a process of releasing, and 2.8 will never come out. You have to go to Python 3, and the top one, the informational one is uh, where you have PEP8, which has kind of the BDFL's directions of suggestion who now to document code, or PEP20, uh, which is uh, uh, the Zen of Python. Everybody read the, the Zen of Python, right? Okay. If not, just go into Python and do import this. Just go into the shell and do import this. Um, so, um, instead of talking about what PEPs are, uh, I, I figured that they're, they're, they're so good that here it is. Th these are the five uh, top PEPs. Uh, the last two came from the audience here uh, that I sent you to read. Um, again, it's, it's, it's great documentation. It's also reading PEPs is, for me as a developer, is learning how to code. Uh, and I really enjoy writing reading great documentation and no peps peps are the best and and when i'm doing full stack and i sometimes have to muddle in the javascript swamp and i have to read it's not really documentation i have to read the the use cases that the, the javascript community publishes for the, for the libraries it makes me bang it really it's terrible i mean it, th that's what i like a python it's it's the, the the docs are great um I won't have time. I won't have time to talk about gov for government. Uh, lucky me. But uh, yeah, we have to have silly walks, right? Uh, so uh, Tim O'Reilly talked about government as a platform and using the the PC analogy and thinking how it applies to government. Uh, if you're interested to learn more, uh, can go online and uh, um, look for uh, Tim's uh, uh, talk about government 2.0. Um, okay, I think, yeah, I'm almost there, uh, apart from uh, the last, uh, let's forget that, uh, let, uh, just to wrap it up, uh, ju just to, two minutes, okay, two minutes, I can have two minutes, right? Okay, okay, just to wrap it up, I mean, uh, start with the user, I mean, uh, on the flight over here to Prague, I sat next to an Israeli who lives few years in Prague and he we started talking politics like Israeli usually do and he was really annoyed that, that he can't vote. Uh, do Czech people living abroad uh, can, can vote in the election? Yeah, you can go to the embassy and vote. Uh, it, Israel doesn't allow us and he said it, it's, it's, it's wrong. And 
I, I, we talked about it, I agree with him, and if we had this system, I would go and search all the uh, bills that are out there in the drafts of the different parties and look who does anybody wrote about it. Uh, is there a, a, a suggestion to allow Israeli outside the country to vote? And I'll find it, I'll try to promote it, I'll write it. I'll f if there's not anything I can find, I can talk to my brother-in-law, who's a lawyer, and together work on drafting something and then putting it in a party or more than one party and waiting. And one day, a member of parliament will say, well, this is important, this is, I want to pick this issue. I select this issue and I'm going to push it through parliament and make it into a law. So that, that's, that's the way I see the system, the, the democracy is going. It's not wisdom of the crowd, but it's more allowing the wise people in the crowd to contribute and to be part of the democratic process. Um, now, as I leave here and go back to Israel, I'm going to probably start working on a, a party, an open party platform. Uh, and I really hope you guys will talk me out of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it can be a really bad idea. Uh, but uh, th this lady in the middle, uh, she, she's, uh, oh, her name is Oli Levy Abekasis, and she's a member of the Knesset, uh, one of the most esteemed... Uh, sh she's really good. She's working hard, and she has no party now. She left her party. So the plan is to come up to her, uh, and I've talked to her a few times. She's really nice, and everybody likes her. So I'm thinking of starting a party platform, tell her, hey, be our queen, uh, and we'll uh, start working on a book of drafts. Uh, he left us his shoe. Uh, that's, ab that's about it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, How did you debug without Stack Overflow back then? Uh, great question. Who asked it? <laughs> Hi. Well, when, when I started working, it, it it's debugger. It's thinking. It's, it's, it's a lot in the debugger and playing with different things. Uh, you don't look for questions. You try to understand. I, I feel that the best debugging technique is rubber duck debugging. Just get the rubber duck and tell him what you told the code to do and what happened. And you'll see that it will help you solve the problem. Um, so when Stack Overflow is a lot about writing the search query for, for the problem you have, and, and then you realize what it is. Uh, what is the mean of white place on the left side? Who asked that? Akeda. <laughs> Wait. No, it's there. Where am I? I'm lost. Here it is. What's the, what's the meaning of the white place in Kader graphs on the left side? <laughs> no, seriously. Ah, that was back. This is. It, uh, who asked the question? Nobody's uh, confessing. No, well, you did now. <laughs> Do you understand the question? Anybody? Uh, the, the white place has place in the this is place where there's no connections. I mean, these are the networks, these are the nodes. It goes around, the, it's the longitude. The, the angle here is the longitude across the globe, basically. So I, I'm not sure where the Czech Republic is, wait. Uh, I have to go uh, look online. Uh, I think this is the US here, I think. So I, I think they're, they're talking about the other graph. The what? The other graph. The left. This is the Pacific. <laughs> this is the Pacific. This is uh, the Pacific Islands. I mean, going uh, east from New Zealand, uh, there's really nothing there. <laughs> I mean, look, look at the globe. Turn it around so you have Kiribati in the middle, the island of Kiribati. Put it in the middle of uh, Google, uh, Google Earth and you'll see a lot of white stuff. Uh, what was the name of the app creating video out of a Git web? Answer Gorse? Yep, it's great. Do you know the Pirate Party? Uh, who asked uh, about the Pirate Party? Hi. Yeah, we, uh, we played around 
with the liquid feedback, which is the system of the German uh, pirate party. Uh, we translated it into Hebrew and we ran a, a, an evening playing with it. Uh, and I think it's a great system for voting, but voting isn't the challenge. It's not about getting everybody to vote of an anything. I mean, we wouldn't have that kind of a com this kind of a community if people would vote on everything. The problem is how you let people draft, how you get people to draft, to, to, to suggest enhancement proposals. Voting is not the issue, I think. I think that all this pirate party and give getting the direct democracy, that, that's not the way to go. Uh, th that's, my, that's my opinion, okay? I mean, uh, it's still successful in a lot of places, but th there's I, I have an argument with those guys. That's it. Great. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.